This is problem 8.5 from Brigham and Houston's Fundamentals of Financial Management Concise Ninth Edition. Again, we're just calculating expected or required rates of return based on the capital asset pricing model inputs. All right, so a stock has a required rate of return of 9%. Its risk-free rate, 4.5, and market risk premium is 3%. What's the stock's beta? Okay, so if I do the risk-free rate and the risk premium, and then the total return, let me start with the market. And then I'm looking at the stock, we'll call it stock X. The risk-free rate is going to be the same for both of them. Okay, 4.5%. 4.5%. It says that the market risk premium is 3%. So the entire stock market is expecting to earn 7.5%. This particular stock is expected to earn 9%, and that's just given in the problem. That means that its risk premium would be its total return minus the risk-free rate, okay, or 4.5%. So what's its beta? All right, so the beta of stock X is equal to the risk premium for X divided by the risk premium for the market, which would be 4.5% divided by 3.0%, and that comes out to 1.5, so it's 50% more It's 1.5 times as risky, okay? So its risk premium is 1.5 times the risk premium of the average market. If the market risk premium increased to 5%, what would happen to the stock's required rate of return? Okay, so if we go to, let's just go out here, stock X star, If the risk-free rate stayed the same, but the market risk premium increased to 5%, yeah, put them both in there, that'd be the market star. So that'd still be the same because it didn't say it changed any. All right, this goes to 5%, then the market would go to 9.5%. Stock X, its risk premium would be 1.5 times 5%, or 7.5%. We add those two numbers together, and it would go to 12%, okay? So that's part B. If the risk-free rate and beta remain unchanged, then if the market risk premium goes to 5, stock X's risk premium is 1.5 times whatever it is for the market. Add these two component pieces together and you get the total expected return.